Hey everybody, welcome to today's video where I'm going to review and demo this Ryobi 40 volt cordless pull saw. Alright, so before we get started, I just wanted to mention that if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, um, please do so, I'd greatly appreciate it. Alright, so what we're going to do today is talk about some of the features of this saw. I'm going to go ahead and put it together and we'll do some trimming and see how it does. So everything you see right here now is everything that comes in the box. That includes the strap, the handle, power head, two poles, the cutting head, and the battery and the charger. This saw will run you right around $200. And again, that includes everything that you see here. All right, so on to some of the features of the saw. This is powered by a 40 volt lithium battery that is two amp hours in capacity. The nice thing about that battery is that it's used in the uh, same family of Ryobi tools across the board. So if you have several different Ryobi tools, you can use the same batteries throughout and you'll end up with several different batteries and chargers having different, several different tools. If you do want to buy just an extra battery, that'll run you about $100, which I think is a little bit expensive. All right, so let's move on to the extension poles. It comes with two poles. Uh, the bottom one here is a mandatory pole that you have to use. And in that length, the pole saw is about six and a half feet. If you need more length, you can add the other pole also, and that will get you to nine and a half feet. Okay, so moving on to the cutting head, it has a 10 inch bar and chain. So you might think to yourself that you can cut wood up to 10 inches in diameter, but that's actually not the case. On the box, they show the maximum capacity of being eight inches. When I read that on the box, I thought maybe that a couple of inches of the bar was, was hidden within the tool. Um, so I got a tape measure just to check and see how much bar was exposed. And there actually is 10 inches of bar exposed. So I'm not 100% sure why they limit you to eight inches. It might just be the capacity of the motor. All right, so let's talk for a minute about the power head. So there, I did see one feature that I really like on this. So you notice you see uh, two devices here. One of them is a lockout, so you can't accidentally uh, trigger the saw. You have to have your hand on the first one before you can actually actuate the saw, which is a good safety feature. For the cutting head, there's a couple things I want to talk about there. Um, so as with any chainsaw, you have to make sure you have bar oil. And so there's a little reservoir here that holds, I think it's two ounces of bar oil. And uh, there's, an, there's a uh, window here on the side here so you can see how much is in it. That's going to be really important to keep track of whenever you're using the saw. Um, if you let that run out, there's chances you can uh, damage the uh, bar and chain. So we can get a look at the, uh, the bar and chain here. Um, there's a uh, behind the cover here, there would be the sprocket. Here's a uh, adjustment here for the uh, chain tension, which I like that it's, it's actually accessible without having to take anything apart. That makes it easy to, to go ahead and adjust that whenever you need to. There's also a guide here that, that would help keep the saw from riding up over whatever you're trying to cut, which I think is nice also. Here's a look what I mentioned earlier about there being 10 inches of, of exposed bar and chain. All right, so what we're gonna do right now is go ahead and put it together. Um, I do want to point out one thing. The battery should be the last thing you put on. There's no reason to put it on before you have the rest of the tool assembled, just for safety. Something else I'll point out here is that this is uh, pretty much impossible to put this together wrong. They have um, some bumps here and everything that makes you orient this correctly as you try to put it together. So that's pretty nice too.
All right, so we're pretty much ready to go. Um, you are gonna wanna go through and make sure the chain is tensioned properly. I've already done that, um, but make sure that's tensioned properly before you go ahead and use it. All right, so let's go ahead and take this thing outside and see what it can do. All right, so I made a few cuts. Uh, let's talk about how well it cut. Overall, I think it did a pretty good job. Because of how high up the limbs that I had to cut, I did have both extensions on there. And I will tell you that this thing is pretty front heavy whenever you have both extensions on. I did expect it to be a little bit better balanced as far as that goes, but um, definitely has a lot of weight out front when it's long. There are pros and cons to that though. The con being obviously that it's heavy out front, it can be a little bit fatiguing if you're gonna use this for an extended period of time. But there is a benefit to having some extra weight out front, and that's going to be that the saw is going to do a lot of the work for you whenever you're cutting. Uh, you shouldn't really have to put a lot of downward pressure yourself. Uh, the weight of the saw should be able to do a lot of the cutting for you. It doesn't cut very fast. The limbs that I cut were probably 3 to 5 inches in diameter, and it took a little bit of time to cut through each of those. So it's definitely not going to cut as fast as a full-size chainsaw, but th these are two different pieces of equipment. That's not really what this is uh, designed to be. As far as battery life goes, I'm not really going to get into that. Um, they, like I said earlier in the video, it's a 2 amp hour battery, but as far as how long this is going to last for you, it's really going to depend on the diameter of the limbs you're trying to cut, how many cuts you're making, and so on. So it's sort of difficult to put any sort of number on that, and I couldn't even find one in the manual either. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I do want to mention that I'm not affiliated with Ryobi in any way. I did purchase this pull saw with my own money. So um, you can expect there not to be any sort of bias related to that in this video. That's about all I have for today. Um, like I said earlier, if you haven't subscribed already, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up too. And if you have one of these, I'd appreciate you uh, putting something down in the comments below about your experience with it too. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.